great mind that tore to shreds the shams it encountered is at rest. Here it is, Aird St. Lawrence House, where Pathé secured these pictures as Mrs. Layden, his housekeeper, tells him that Lady Astor, his great friend, has called. George Bernard Shaw went to the rest he craved in the last waking hours. These were the last pictures taken, whilst he could still roam the garden he loved so well. And this, the last time he walked out of the picture. But this is not the Shaw he would have us remember. Rather that other Shaw, roaming the world, live and exuberant, trenchant in judgment, brilliant in wit. Pirouetting the deck off Miami, for instance, and then stopping suddenly to sum up a nation and its ruler in a scintillating, devastating second. How do you feel about Mr. Roosevelt? Well, uh, Mr. Roosevelt, you see what the situation is. You have a good president and you have a bad constitution. And the bad constitution gets the better of the good president all the time. The end of it will be that you might as well have an English prime minister. <laughs> now at Shaw's corner, silence reigns in the little workroom from whence so much wit and wisdom streamed to an eager world. The last word is written. Beyond all else, Shaw made men think. Time alone can assess his greatness. This generation is perhaps too near to judge.